Good evening. We're now uh, beginning our celebration service for Good Friday. This image here is um, typ it's very typical. It's pretty modernistic. It's not as realistic. Um, you probably ask the questions, why is this sun and the moon in this drawing? Well, it symbolizes the fact that Jesus, he stayed up the entire night before and he was put on trial and he was actually put on the cross about three o'clock. And it symbolizes the sun was there when he was put on there. And as soon as he passed away, the scriptures tell us that the moon or that the darkness descended and it covered the entire earth. And that's why we have the symbol of the, the lightness of day and the darkness of night. And it's when that happened that all these amazing other things happened within the city of Jerusalem, things that frightened a lot of people. We'll be discussing some of those things that the people were frightened about as we begin our message. Thank you. Um, here we are gathered once again for the uh, Good Friday service. We do this as a means of ritual that we repeat every year and for good reason. And we begin this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to be reading from page 56 in the brief order of confession and forgiveness as found in the Green Hymnal. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I'd like to uh, have our first reading. I'd like Jackie to share it from, uh, from a passage from the Old Testament. The passage I'm about to read is from Isaiah 53, which is an incredibly accurate and profound prophecy that was written some 700 years before Christ. So please pay attention to these words with your heart as the Holy Spirit guides you in them. Isaiah 53. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hid their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. 
He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Thanks be to God. This is his word. Thank you, Jackie. Last night we had the, uh, the readings from the New Testament dealing with uh, Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday, the events came and went. Jesus left, was arrested, and he was taken to the place where he was put on trial by all the leaders of the people, and he was found, uh, he was deemed as guilty, and he was crucified. And this passage comes from Matthew chapter 27. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Verse 45, the death of Jesus. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing heard, heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar and put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. And the rest said, now let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come and save him. And when Jesus had cried out again with a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy men, holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified. And they exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there, standing at a, dis at a distance, and they followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Here ends the reading. I mentioned these things. Uh, I, I'm very, very aware that as we all are as Christians, but I'm also mindful that there are people watching this video that may have no idea what the Christian attitude is or how it is that we act. Because Jesus stepped between the darkness of an eternal eternity of sin into the abyss that is between the absence of truth and the light of the, of the holiness of God, Jesus did that for us. He became the person, the, the entity that gapped that bridge. Some people may be watching and they've never understood what it is that Christians do or think. Why it is that they would say that any man had to die for such a thing that we call sin. Well, because God is a holy God. He is purity itself. There's no shadow in his presence. He is holy. In the, begin, in the, begin, in the very beginning, our first parents our earliest ancestors, chose a path that led away from God. Their choices to do what was unacceptable to the Creator led them away from God to an everlasting and increasing grayer, dimmer, darker world. And with time, they could no longer see. Jesus 
understandably, is called the light of the world. Jesus stepped into that dark abyss between the emptiness of a sinful existence and the pure light of the holiness of God. And on this day, we remember what happened on that occasion when he was put to death. This Passover season, which was recorded by the Jews for 1,500 years before Jesus was born, the sacrifice was always necessary. And it was supposed to take place on this Friday. Every sacrifice for the, these animals that were to be sacrificed were killed on a Friday. But Jesus had another plan. Because the night before, all those celebrations were to take place on Friday. But Jesus and his disciples, the night before, on Thursday, they had to have their celebration by themselves, uniquely because Jesus was to be the sacrificial lamb. I want to show you something right here. This sculpture has been in this church uh, since it started. And this, this uh, sculpture represents Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. There's a lot of Im imagery mixed here, but I'll just mention this, that he was supposed to die for the sins of people because it, goes, it harkens back all the way to the Old Testament when the Passover meal was, was taken. Jackie, would you take this for me, please? Thank you. But Jesus and his disciples, as I mentioned, they had other plans. The sacrifice of the lamb was supposed to take place about 3 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, just before the sunset, because the Jewish holy day started on Friday at sunset. And so the lamb had to be killed before sunset, which is exactly what happened for Jesus. And Caiaphas, without realizing it, he said in John chapter 11, verse 50, Caiaphas was arguing it was better for, and he says, do you, not, do you know nothing at all, nor do, you, nor do you take into account that it is better for one man to die for all the people than that the whole nation should perish. So unwittingly, Caiaphas makes this statement but ideally, in God's sovereignty, that idea was put into the psyche of the nation hundreds, hundreds, a thousands, thousands of years before. In God's mind, he had it set up so this would be the image that would be carried through so that when Jesus' arrival came, he would be the one that would cover the sins. There was this whole idea of the sacrificial animal. There was a thing called a scapegoat. This goat, this goat was taken into the temple. The priest would lay his hands on this goat's head and transfer all the sins of the nation and cast this goat out and it would go into the wilderness and die. That's what Jesus was to do. He was to take this, this death upon himself. And similarly, we have a list of covenants through the years. One, the first one that the covenant was made was when I mentioned those earliest parents, Adam and Eve, when they sinned. God was right there and he made a covenant and he said, don't worry because there will come a day when your seed, your child, your descendant will crush the head of Satan. And that was Jesus. And so Jesus, as I mentioned, he stepped into that role. And he's done it throughout the ages, through all the covenants with Noah, with Abraham, with, on, the, on the heights of Sinai, um, King David, and ultimately, in Jesus, which we share in the bread and the wine, he was the ultimate and the last covenant which could be, which would take care of all of our sins. A focus of history culminates on this day, this Good Friday. It was a day fraught with fear by many people. Fear came forward on that day by just about everybody that was around. The Jewish leaders were afraid because they saw in Jesus a threat to their position. They also saw Jesus as a threat to their nation because the Romans could do something drastic like shut them down. The Romans themselves were pretty nervous because they didn't, Pilate himself was very upset. He did not want anything to happen. Pilate's wife in Matthew chapter 27, history says their name was Claudia. And Claudia warned her husband, don't do anything rash because this man is innocent. She was afraid. 
Peter was afraid because he had made this drastic statement. He said, I will always protect you. I will do whatever I can. I will never desert you. And we know the passages on, on this occasion that he betrayed Jesus three times. And he was afraid. He was ashamed of himself. And the other man that night that betrayed Jesus was Judas. And he was afraid because he knew that he had betrayed innocent blood. And all the disciples, because they ran, they were afraid. In which, and I suppose if you and I had been there at that time, if we would have been Jesus' disciples at that time, we would have been afraid too. And I would venture to say there are many people afraid even today. Not, since, not just since this virus has come into our awareness over these last months, and will continue for we don't know how long. People are afraid. But Jesus has come. Jesus has come, and this is a wonderful statement. He's challenged by, he's challenged by Pilate. You see, Pilate is the leader of the Romans, but he's in, he's, in, he's in deep sorts himself because he knows that his own life is on the line because back in Rome, he's in trouble. If he can't quell this riot, if he can't keep things calm, he's going to be out. And so he simply asked the question, he, he asked he asked Jesus, he said, are, are you truly the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, that is why I've come. Jesus has come so that he would be that one that would cover our sins. There are those, there are those things right now where there's, there's a, a credible mass disruption in our nations across the world. As I mentioned, this virus, this virus, virus which claims many communities where housing developments are closed and crowded and shut off. We know that there are people that are, cannot visit their loved ones, that there are no more normal social events have been outlawed or contained or disrupted or prevented. And they're being forced to, do, to deal with their own loneliness. And loneliness, loneliness is now becoming pretty much the norm in many places around the world. As it is now, so it was then. And in each one of those cases, Jesus is the one that addresses that. Jesus is the one that causes, he releases that pause button, although it will exist for another few days for these disciples. They're not sure. They know that this man that they have adored as their, as their savior, who Peter declared to be Messiah, he's gone. He's in the tomb. They're distraught. Everybody's a bit anxious. The disciples, Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene, who will meet him at the tomb on Sunday, the Jewish leaders, the crowds, the Romans, all of them, all of them are not sure. They're not sure what's going to happen. None of them know what will be happening as this dramatic pause draws on. But you know what? We know. We know what happens on Sunday morning. And that's the best part of all. Let's finish. We're going to have a time for some prayers right now as we pray for those individuals in our community and surrounding. So the things that we lift up I would, I would ask you to please be intentional as you hear what our words of prayers are because there's a lot of people that you know. We will not mention all the names that are on your hearts. We will give a pause so you can pray for those individuals. As we mentioned last night, it's the belief in the blood of Jesus that, that causes our hearts to be filled. It's that belief that causes our hearts to be at calm. And it's that belief in Jesus who is the Messiah, who is the King. It's that belief which causes all of us to be at peace. Jackie, would you come and begin our time? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we can come before you. Mm. Lord, each one of us in our own places right now we open our hearts before you. We thank you that as, as we speak these words of prayer, Lord, that they will be echoed 
in each heart that hears them and that Father the resounding Amen will come. Father we do lift before you the family of Gwelda Osterber who has passed this day and we just ask very especially Father for your peace to be with the family. Mm. Lord, in this difficult time where ordinarily people would gather in great numbers, we know, Father, that is not possible. So please, Lord, be with this family and others who are going through similar losses in these days. May they know you close in their grieving. Mm -hmm. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask, Father, that... Um, this fear that is now flying around the world that seems to enter into many homes and houses and governments. We ask that people who are afraid and that you, gracious Jesus, would come and touch them and remove that fear. Your word says, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it says, perfect love casts out all fear. We need not fear because we know that you are present. We know that that passage says that where there's, there's punishment, where there is a fear of punishment, that causes people to be hesitant, to be frightened, and to withdraw. Father, we ask that your Son, in the truth of his love, would continue to rest in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray before you now for each family, each individual, in each home who listens in even now lord that you would please come minister to them let each community leader father let each key worker be they truck drivers store assistants medical personnel lord the list goes on of those we lift before you right now and ask that there may be your calm, your peace, your provision, and Father, the fulfillment of your promises into each and every life we mm. pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we, we beseech you that you would have a, a deepening awareness in all of us that the Lord responds. We simply need to ask him and his promises that he will answer. Lord Jesus, that was your promise in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16 in both places. You promised the comfort of your Holy Spirit to speak to us. And in each of those passages, you said, whatever you ask for, I will grant it. We just, we pray, Father, that we would ask in belief, profoundly in belief, trusting that you will respond to us because of your promise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. Father, we pray for the nations around the world. Lord, again, we know we bring a huge prayer before you, but we join ours, Father, with the prayers of many, many different nationalities, brothers and sisters in Christ the world over, Father, who are coming before you and beseeching you for their land for their people, for their own families. Lord, we know of places, especially we know of Bangladesh here in this community. Lord, we pray for Bangladesh and for other nations that do not have the resources that we do. People there truly are afraid. Mm -hmm. It is a very present threat. Father, we do pray your hand of protection, your, pr your hand of healing, and Lord, your hand of power to stay yes, the Lord. spread of this virus yes, all over the world. Father, we do ask these things in Jesus' most mighty and powerful name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And lastly, Father, we know from the from the older texts of the Old Testament that your prophets continually, de de continually declare that they will proclaim the mighty works that you have done.
Father, our prayer is that you would give us the boldness to speak like that. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about how we proclaim, proclaim the boldness of the mysteries of the gospel. May they come readily from our lips. May we simply lift. We don't have to be so, so obvious, but just by speaking to our neighbors and our friends and our loved ones about what Jesus has done for our life, that plants seeds in the hearts of many that don't know and are not, are not sure and as yet doubt. Allow us, all the parents that hear this, all these children that know it, may they simply make a declaration like, yeah, Jesus did this, or the Lord has done this for us, or we thank God for what he's done. Because, Father, we know that your spirit inhabits our praises. When we praise God, we not only lift up his name, but he is honored. And our ultimate purpose in this life is to honor you. We lift these prayers up to you on this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And lastly, we finish with that prayer that your son has taught us to pray and do so boldly. As we say those words that Jesus taught to his disciples, he taught to us. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for your attention. I'd like to uh, read this one passage. It's from Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, as a benediction as we prepare to leave. St. Paul writes this to, uh, to, his, to his colleagues and to the young ones that are learning the gospel. And it says, May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may you keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And lastly, May the spirit of the holiness guard you and keep you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Blessings to you as you make preparations for Easter Sunday morning. And may your hearts be, may your hearts be encouraged each day from now through then.